What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So we have a customer bike in the shop today, CB550. Uh, something you guys I'm sure are familiar with seeing in my shop. Um, it's in for a few different things, but the, what we're going to tackle today is going to be a complete uh, carb rebuild. And uh, since I made a Will It Run video a couple of weeks ago, I, a lot of you requested a step-by-step -step on how to rebuild these carbs. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you every step of the way. I'm sure it's going to be a lengthy video. It's going to be very technical. Um, so if you guys are into just the kind of normal videos of fun watching me build projects and stuff, this may or may not be the one for you. Uh, but if you have a CB550, this should be hopefully a comprehensive guide to removing, disassembling, cleaning, and reassembling your carbs. First step, you don't technically have to remove the gas tank, but um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so we're going to remove the fuel lines. Obviously, since the gas tank is off of this bike, they're already gone. Uh, but there's either going to be one or two fuel lines just based on what kind of petcock you have. Uh, make sure that obviously the petcock is turned off. Uh, you can pull it. Sometimes they'll have hose clamps, sometimes they won't. You know, set a needle nose pliers or even just your hands, depending on how long those lines have been on there. Pull both those uh, lines off. Then you can uh, lift the tank off, basically just has a rubber mount in the back, slides over the front, super easy to pull the tank off. Um, so now that we have access to everything, we're going to need to get a uh, JIS screwdriver. Uh, you can get away with a Phillips screwdriver. Um, you know, if you don't work on your classic Honda or classic Japanese bike all the time, you may or may not be um, you know, interested in picking up a set of JIS, which is technically what these screws are, Japanese industrial standard. Um, I got away for a couple of years when I first started working on bikes with just having a Phillips screwdriver. Um, but I'm going to use JIS because I have it. We are going to be uh, undoing the uh, rubber boots. There's a clamp around each one on all four carbs. They'll have the little screws pointing out, or they should be pointing out. So cylinder one and two, the screws will be uh, pointing this way. Uh, number three and number four, the screws will be pointing the opposite way. So these are the little clamps I was talking about if you couldn't see. We don't have to pull the screw all the way out. We just basically wanted to get it to the point where each clamp is loose. If you're working on a stock bike, you'll have to remove your air box um, and your kind of whole intake system as well. Uh, I can't show you that on this bike since it's already got these velocity stacks on here. Um, so I'm going to be removing these with just a little Allen screws. If you have pod filters, obviously you'll remove the pod filter or a factory intake, you'll remove that as well. So got these two undone. I'll go to the other bike, pull those two off. I'll go ahead and pull the velocity stacks and then we'll move on to the throttle cable. In this case, it's just a pull cable. Um, so there is basically a 10 millimeter nut on either side of these. And this is what we're going to adjust at the very end to take out some of this slack. Um, so we're basically just going to put a 10 millimeter wrench, loosen this nut as much as we can or as much as we need to just to make enough, enough clearance in this cable for us to slide it back a little bit and then come down. And that's going to allow it to free. We can wrap the cable around. And then if you're familiar with how most cables work, it's basically going to, you know, once you get this cable around to the right angle, you can slide the little cable sideways and that'll free it from the carves. And we can just let it dangle here. But um, at this point, we are ready to get in there and, and actually pull the carves off of these boots. So to pull these out, typically what I do is pull them down and that will get them part of the way out and like that. And then you can pull up from the bottom and that's just making sure they're nice and loose. And then you can just walk them out. And I'm going to be nice, careful enough to uh, hit this side cover just like that. And then you can go either way, but I think it's easier to go that direction because the uh, clutch cable is we are out. Okay, I got you guys set up in a uh, overhead camera setup, so hopefully this works well to kind of be able to use both my hands and show you guys what I'm looking at and not have you some kind of crazy other angle where I'm going to be in the way. Um, so what we're going to do first is actually drain the fuel out of these. Um, this something you can do on the bike since this bike did not have the drain hoses on the bottom of the bowls on these little brass nipples here. 
I am going to uh, drain it this way. So basically there's just a flathead drain screw on each bowl that hopefully won't be too tight. Oof. All right. So we are going to pull each one of those off. Just let the fuel drain out into our little drain pan here and then we're ready to uh, disassemble without worrying about gas uh, pulling out all over the place. So. Now the uh, fuel's drained. I got one of these little trays um, from Harbor Freight. It was like $4 or $6 or something like that. It just kind of helps to uh, keep some of these little parts organized. So we'll just put all our drain screws in one. Now I like to start with pulling off any of the hoses. So these two hoses in the center here are just vent lines. You could in theory probably get away without even having these at all. Um, but might as well just throw some cheap hose on there. So I'm going to flip it over and then I can tilt it up like this. And that's going to give me access to all of my bowls. We're going to take our JIS screwdriver and go through and pull out all 16 of these. So if your carbs have ever been worked on, which you know 99% of these bikes um, have for sure had carb work done. Um, there's a good chance somebody got in here and probably stripped these or replaced them with a bunch of mismatched screws. Um, you can, you know, replace these obviously. I keep on hand a bunch of stainless Allen head um, screws that are all of the sizes and everything for these. Um, sometimes when I do rebuilds for customers, I will upgrade these to stainless Allen so that we don't have to worry about it. Use the back of your screwdriver. See these? Unfortunately, this customer paid to have a rebuild done only a couple of weeks ago. And uh, yeah, I don't know what the person did, but all of these gaskets are like the original kind of petrified rubber. They're super hard. There's like some kind of residue, like maybe they just smeared some kind of silicone or RTV and just smashed them back on. Um, kind of unfortunate. I hate to see uh, shops that do that kind of stuff. You know, who knows? Maybe they just did it on the house and said, hey, we'll just clean your carbs real quick. Um, but if they charged them for a full rebuild and this is what they did, um, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't be going back to that shop. But. We don't need to worry about that. So I will pull all of these off and then bring you guys back with the next step. So first we're gonna remove these little, uh, I don't know what they're called, jet wing clips. That sounds like a good name. Uh, basically these little clips are designed to kind of press up against the bottom of the bowl and hold in your main jet so that it doesn't fall out. So these are very important. For whatever reason you buy a set of carbs that doesn't have these, you will need to get some. Um, and then I'll show you, of course, when we reinstall everything, uh, how to just make sure they're positioned properly, but they are very important. They just basically slide right off. You give them a little bit of a twist and then you can slide it right off the jet. Pull the main jets out. I'm going to see what this bike was jetted at. These are 105. So typically when I go with a pod filter and an open exhaust like this bike has, I'll go to a 110, um, which is, you know, a little, just a little bit bigger than uh, what came on this bike. And then I will go with a either a 38 or a 40 um, for the secondary jets. Let's see what this bike has. So just a flathead screwdriver and we can unscrew these jets. These are a little bit taller ones. These are 40s. So what I would run, but I would you know, it's probably just a little bit leaner than I would like to see it. Um, I may actually reach out to the customer and see if they want me to uh, to swap in 110s or just keep these 105s, just based on how the bike has been riding in the past. So we'll unscrew all of these. Um, on your new rebuild kits, I will uh, throw a link in the description to the rebuild kits I have, but let me just show you real quick. They will come with factory size jets. Um, so you'll have to keep in mind if you guys are going to change to a more free flowing exhaust, to pod filters, anything like that, you're going to need to rejet these carbs. Uh, and this is obviously the perfect time to do it. So keep in mind your rebuild kit's gonna come with stock sizing. 
I don't even remember what stock sizing is, probably 100 and maybe 35 or something like that. Um, so now would be a perfect time to bump up those jet sizes if you need it. And uh, you know, obviously just make sure to order them when you order your rebuild kits. Okay, so now that we have all of the jets out, we can go and pull the floats. So the way the floats work is there is this little pin that goes through these two posts and then the float kind of just hinges right off of that. So sometimes you'll get lucky, like this one I'm gonna get lucky, and you just kinda push it from one side, pull it straight out from the other side, and then your jet will come off. So there's a little tube right here, holes on each side of that, and that is how your jet kind of mounts. Um, occasionally they will be very stuck, and you'll have to use either a pick or a very small screwdriver, a small punch, uh, something like that uh, to get them out. You can also grab you know, one end from uh, the side here with like a set of needle nose pliers or I have a little set of uh, you know, stubby pliers that I use sometimes. So just kind of whatever you have on hand. Just keep in mind that these are brass, uh, so they're very soft. So you can uh, you know, kind of permanently damage them if you grab on too hard. So you should be able to just like this Give it a little twist. You know, the, the most you can do by hand, the better, um, just because you're less likely to kind of bend or break something. I'll show you how I like to clean these up a little bit later too. And just keep on going down the line. So now that these are out, the next step is going to be to pull the needles. So the needles are just sitting in these little seats right here. So you can just take those little needle nose pliers or your fingers if they're small enough. And just pull those little guys out. That's what a needle looks like if I can try and show you. So it's got like a little springy bit on one side and a kind of pointy nose on the other side. So just pulling those out. And then we can grab our screwdriver and undo these seats. So it's just like a little U-clamp, a little metal U-shaped deal that holds that seat in. You can see just that. Now that all these are out, we can take our needle nose again and gently twist and pull. These little seats are held in um, with an o-ring as well. I'm not too worried about messing these up because we do have replacements uh, in the rebuild kits. So it's more about just getting them out. So the difference would be if you're just you know trying to get a bike running and you don't actually have a rebuild kit, um, you know you'll obviously want to take a lot of care to not mess these up uh, because you'll be putting them back. In. So that is the underside completely disassembled. We'll flip over now and we can move on to, we'll go ahead and pull out the mixture screws. So they're going to be on the sides. The, basically they, the screws point out. So these two have the screws right here on the side, right here. Next carb over is in that same position, but on the other two carbs they're facing the other way. So similar to how our drain screws were on our bowls, basically they always face outwards. So we're gonna keep track of what these were set to. We will probably uh, adjust these later when they're running on the bike, but just for good measure, they're normally like, say one, one and a half turns out, uh, especially with pod filters. So half, one, one and a half. So these are one and a half turns out. So we'll pull them all the way out. There is going to be a little spring in here as well. Again, these do come in the rebuild kit, so it's not super important that we uh, keep track of them, but I'm going to, just in case again, you guys are, are doing a rebuild and don't have the replacement parts. Maybe get a little pick, try and get this spring out of here. I like to keep some of these parts on hand too, just in case 
I need them for a future build, so I try not to lose any of the pieces or you know destroy them unnecessarily. Now we've got them flipped over, we're going to go ahead and pull off all of these screws on the top of these caps and get those out of the way. This is going to give us access to the tops of the slides. There's little gaskets on the bottom of these that come in the kits as well. And now you can see all the little arms in there that our slides go on to. Uh, what do we want to do next? We'll go ahead and pull off these caps um, and we'll get these ready to separate. Um, and then we'll need to uh, pull the screws off the back to actually separate it, but we'll pull these and these off. These just screw right off so you can just be careful not to bend any of this, these brackets or anything. They shouldn't be on very tight. Shouldn't be the key word there. Just wanna. Yeah, this one's tighter than it needs to be. Here we go. Unscrew them and just be careful when you unscrew these because there is going to be a little spring under there and Then underneath that spring. There's this little What would I, how would I explain it? It's kind of almost like a golf tee This little guy right here and What this does I'll show you here in a little bit when we get the linkage taken apart but basically it's like cupped on this side and that rides on a little ball that's part of this linkage. It goes up and down, and then this spring goes over it like that. And then the cap would be on this side. So we'll go ahead and pull off the other three. All right, now we're ready to move on to the next piece of linkage. So that's gonna be these four little screws right here. So I'll see if I can get you an up close look at them. So these are actually the screws you use to do sinking on these carbs. So these actually adjust that slide in there on how uh, high up and down it is. I'll show you guys how to do a bench sink uh, later on, but basically if you can see I'll try to get you a good view here There's little slots on the top and then there's little lock nuts So these are like 10 millimeter lock nuts and the slot right here on the top We're gonna stick a flathead screwdriver in there and we're just gonna unscrew these and Take them out as one piece with this little connecting bar here. Oh, I lied to you. They're not 10 millimeter eight yeah they're eight millimeter so just crack those loose a little bit we don't really care about losing the adjustment because we're going to rip this whole thing apart here in just a minute anyway let's see if it'll unscrew now yeah So we'll unscrew these all the way out. Show you what they look like. So these have little domes on them as well because they ride on a separate little ball on the linkage. Uh, but we'll just keep them together like this. Throw them in our little parts bin and do the same thing to this side. Now that both of those are out, we are going to flip the carbs on their front here 
and pull out these eight screws that actually hold the carbs to this bracket. So these shouldn't be too terribly tight, but who knows? You know, if Hercules rebuilt them before you and over tightened them or stripped them out. Sometimes I'll replace these uh, with some stainless Allen bolts as well. Just kind of depends on the overall condition of the screws themselves. Sometimes you can just wire wheel them and bring them back to life. And like these, they're not stripped at all or anything. There's really no reason to to replace them. It's not like it's something you're going to see on the bike anyway. Okay, take all those, put them aside. Now the carbs are going to be pretty loose, but they're not going to fall off of the body itself. Let me see if I can get you a good view of what we're going to do now. So now we need to actually separate them. So we'll just start from this side. It really doesn't matter. We're going to pull, there's this little bracket that we just unscrew those pieces off of. You can pull it to the side and release it from that little back bracket there. That will start to free us up. You'll need to pull the carb this direction as well. And just kind of work it back and forth until you just get it free and then we can go straight this direction because there's going to be a, a vacuum line and a fuel line that connect these two and I'll show you that here in just a second vacuum line is tight Let's see if we can break it at least a little bit Probably just cut it as well. We're going to replace these lines because all this rubber is petrified. Alright, you know what? We're just going to cut it. Since, like I said, we're going to be replacing it anyway. And that brings this little guy free. So, that's the first carb. So, this is that little bracket I was talking about. So, in the bottom of this, there is another one of those little golf tee looking deals and a spring. And that is in this bottom side hole, spring down. Just like that. So let me see if I can get this to focus and show you what I'm talking about. So that slides in there like that. And then the little ball that's on this bracket right here, one side of that goes into this top hole and this bottom one goes into a very similar ball on the carb itself. So there's a little notch in there and again I'll show you this when we go to put it back together but that's kind of how it sits in there and then that little adjusting screw deal holds it in and that's what lets all of the carbs kind of ride up and down on the linkage so when you can take it apart it's basically you're pushing you know it has that spring tension you're making sure it's all the way up and then you can give it a little bit of a twist and take it out. So I'm going to take the little spring and these are identical. These little springs and the golf tee for lack of a better word again um, to the other ones. So you don't have to worry about which one came out of which. You're just going to need you know a pair of these per carb. So we'll throw that over there. We'll throw this bracket over here. We'll just put this carb aside for now and kind of continue this along. Same exact process on the next carb over. Um, difference being this one doesn't have a fuel line that connects it, but it will have this little pin that holds your return spring. So it's already loose from that linkage. You can pull it out. We also have the gas line that's right here as well. I'm going to cut our gas line because I'm going to replace it with some OE 
Honda fuel line. So now this one is free as well. So this gas lane right here is removable. It's just a little T and the T has little O-rings and the kit comes with O-rings to replace these. Um, so obviously the fuel line's up to you to source, um, but the little T uh, that goes right in the middle, again, has four O-rings. So we'll put that there. Uh, when we strip all the carbs, we can uh, pull the remaining vacuum line off. Do the same thing on this. Give this little linkage, you know, push it up a little bit and give it a little twist to free it from this carb, just like that. Another little spring. So, we'll go here. Now we are ready to remove our return spring. Sometimes it'll remove itself when you do that. Basically, you can just pull down a little bit and slide over. That's the return spring. And what holds the return spring in is this little metal piece and what that metal, metal piece does is it slides into, half of it goes into that little hole, half of it goes into a matching hole on this side, and then it's got a little groove in the center that, you, you know, half of your spring sits in, and the other half just goes up to the linkage, so. We'll throw that in the bin, throw this in the community bin, come on over here to Number one and two, we'll cut this fuel line just to get it out of our way. This one came with a little T fitting because it has that uh, pet cock that only has one outlet. Put that aside for now. We're ready to pull these off the linkage again. We can just pull these straight out. So that is our bracket totally separated from the carbs. Throw that over here from now. These two carbs, basically identical to the other side, can just work them apart. Just a vacuum line and a fuel line holding these things together right now. Yeah, I'll have to get in here and cut this line too. <coughs> Boom. We are separate. Pull our fuel tee out. So we're not worried about um, making sure that the choke linkage is all hooked up right now. It's gonna kind of spring on its own. Again, I'll show you that when we go to reassembly. Pull these little brackets off with the little springs. Little twist like that. Okay. So now we are ready to strip each individual carburetor down. So what I'm going to do is just go around, remove any of these like extra pieces of vacuum hose that are stuck on here. Everything else should be good. We're ready to remove this slide. So how you remove these slides, let me get you in close. We're going to be removing this little seven millimeter nut right or uh, bolt right here screw whatever you want to call it and there's this little locking tab that holds it in so how you can get those off is just stick a little flathead screwdriver it's thin metal so you don't have to go crazy you just kind of work it in there just flatten it out a little bit just like that just enough to where you can get a little seven mil socket on there throw it on my little screwdriver and we're gonna pull that out. So I like to turn them upside down when I do this just because I don't wanna lose the little lock washer or anything. I wanna kinda of keep them all together. So bear with me for a second while I unscrew it. Okay, so I unscrewed it. I'm gonna put that aside. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be pulling this arm out the side of the carburetor right here. There is going to be a little spring, a couple little retainers, probably a little felt ring uh, on this side. On this side in here, there's this little nylon um, kind of O-ring spacer. So just kind of keep track of that. So we're gonna be pulling this out. You can see that's a little felt ring. 
little plastic retainer. Just going to keep pulling this straight out. Put that right down on the table. Now I'm going to flip this carburetor over. The little o-ring spacer is going to come out right there. And then our slide's going to be free. So we can just pull the slide straight out. And that's it. So that's our needle. We're going to be replacing those. Um, I'll get more detail on this when we go to, um, you know, kind of pull these apart. But that's your little armature. So I pull that apart, put it in the pile over here, and then we only have one step left uh, before this carburetor is ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, to keep everything together on these little parts here, what I'll do is I'll put this little o-ring back on here just keep in mind this goes on the inside of the carburetor this is all on the outside of the carburetor and I will screw my little little screw with the locking tab and the little washer on there a little bit that just keeps everything all nice together we're gonna repeat it on here I'll show you one more time on this one and then I'll just knock out the other two so first step get our little locking tab out of the way that seven mil make sure nothing falls off we lose anything put your little fingernail in there or something pull the arm out of the side get your Retainer ring or spacer, whatever you want to call it. Pull your slide out. Put all this back together. Put my little screw in there. And move on. Last step we're going to do now is pull out the emulsion tubes, which is kind of right in here, right under where the main jet was. And it's actually right where the needle goes in, down there. So hopefully you can see. I wonder if I can get real close and try and get some light in there. It's the little hole right there in the center. There's a little brass piece. And basically what we're going to be doing is just taking, I'm going to use a punch. You can use a screwdriver or anything that's kind of this general shape that will fit down in here right on top of where that the needle went. We're going to give it a little tap of the hammer. And out of the bottom, you see, we have a very dirty, very stuck emulsion tube. So this is one of the replacement parts. Should come in your kit. It's got little holes on it. So that's it. So throw that guy aside. Again, I'll show you one more time. Put our punch straight down into that hole. Sometimes you can just push it with your hand. They've been in there for a couple of years. A couple of light taps. And we'll be able to pull it out. So we're moving to handheld just briefly while I uh, load everything up. So first thing I'm gonna put in the ultrasonic cleaner is gonna be the car bodies themselves. I will throw a link to this ultrasonic cleaner. I just got it off Amazon. It's a relatively cheap, uh, you know, kind of just import um, ultrasonic, but it works really well for me. I run a um, carburetor cleaner that, I don't remember the brand, it's like Brinkley or something like that. It's a carburetor cleaner you can buy from most auto parts store that comes in like a, a one gallon paint can. So we'll throw that in there, and then I'll probably throw in a couple of the little parts. So. I'll go ahead and throw the slides in there because the sides of these have some gunk on them. Um, we'll probably do the bowls and some of the uh, other smaller pieces uh, separately just because, again, we won't have room. I do also have this little like mesh strainer thing that I put some of the little jets and that kind of stuff in there just so I don't have to kind of dig around and obviously they'll fall through this uh, grate. So I have it heated up to, uh, you know, I have it set for 45 degrees Celsius and it apparently is all the way up to 52. So. I don't know that it's super accurate, but uh, it's warmed up. I'm going to drop the carbs in, and I'm going to probably run them for mm, 
we'll call it 10 minutes. Uh, I'll pull them out and I'll show you what the uh, results are. Just pulled the carb bodies out of the ultrasonic cleaner. You can see how it turned out. Pretty good. So not too bad. Slides came out nice and clean as well. So now I'm going to go for a second round. Uh, all of the bowls, I'm going to use a little pick and pull out the little gaskets so that those are going to be completely out. Drop those in the ultrasonic. Um, I will probably, hmm, I mean you could ultrasonic a lot of this stuff too. I'll probably throw in a lot of these little bits um, just because I like to keep them as spares. Um, but again, most of that stuff is going to be replaced uh, by the new kits anyway. Another thing you can do while you're waiting for the ultrasonic cleaner to run, um, of course, again, you don't need an ultrasonic cleaner. If you wanted to just use an aerosol, uh, you know, can of carb cleaner, you could go in here and spray out all the little passages and just make sure you hose it all out really good. All the little areas where your jets were, blow those out, um, you know, through the front here, down the little passage there, kind of all around, you'll just you know all inside where the mixture screw was just hose them down with carb cleaner you know you'll probably go through i would say a minimum of two cans uh, for a set of four carbs but ultrasonic cleaner is just kind of the next step above that um also a good thing to do while you're waiting is go ahead and remove these little gaskets off of the top caps um, best way i know to do that because most of the time they're really stuck down is to use a flat razor blade you can scrape off the majority of it and then I keep a brass wheel on my little buffer over here um, that you can use to kind of clean up and get this level uh, you know, of material kind of removal. It won't hurt the metal, but it will remove all of the little rubber uh, gasket around. So we need to make sure to do all of that as well. This is also the part of this particular program that is um, even more optional. This customer opted in to have their carburetors vapor blasted. Um, so really quick, if you're not familiar with what vapor blasting is, um, I just put out a video a couple of weeks ago about my new machine here. Uh, basically what it is is kind of a mixture of glass bead and water. Um, similar to what you would, uh, I guess, traditionally know as like a dry sand blasting cabinet, except for instead of dry media, it is that water glass uh, slurry, they call it. And then it uses a bunch of uh, water pressure and air pressure to um, totally restore parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and at, this is the proper point in the operation to do the vapor blasting now that the carbs are as stripped down as we need to go. So get a good look at what these carbs look like right now. Uh, I'm gonna vapor blast everything, including this bracket. Um, so you can see the, the dirt and kind of rust on it and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to uh, vapor blast all of these and then I'll bring you guys back when that process is done because uh, we'll be ready for reassembly. Just wanted to give you guys a quick side-by-side -side of vapor blasted versus not vapor blasted. So I am going to offer this, of course I offer it as a service, this is a customer job here, but I was thinking while I was blasting this carb that, you know, if you guys are doing rebuilds on your carburetors at home and you want them blasted, um, you know, I could charge a, a flat fee and kind of blast them for you guys. Um, so we'll just, I don't know, top of my head with the amount of effort that's put into them. You know, if they're sent to me already disassembled to this point, like a flat hundred bucks plus, um, you know, shipping back to you, um, which is, you know, probably a little bit less than uh, what an average kind of vapor blasting shop, if there's even one near you, uh, would charge just because, you know, it's something I want you guys to be able to have access to again, but, you know, just got to cover the the labor cost and the uh, the time involved but as you can see the results are incredible I mean, I'm super stoked on that machine so uh, I won't bore you guys anymore with that I'm gonna get to vapor blasting all the rest of the components got all of the parts vapor blasted and cleaned up you can see how nice and shiny and kind of OE satin finish everything is now um, I also like to do this so this is called nulling technically with a K um, of just setting out all of the rebuild kits, all of the individual jets and everything on a nice um, you know, paper towel or something where the parts aren't going to roll away. Uh, that way I can you know, have carb one, two, three, four and I'm you know, making sure I'm get using all the parts, not forgetting anything. Uh, everything's nice and clean. Uh, since we are reusing the jet, I figured I would show you on this one. 
There is a little o-ring on the jet and these are hard as a rock so I'm breaking them off uh, just with a little pick and then there is a little o-ring, uh, the smallest o-ring in the kit, fits nicely on the jet. So we'll make sure that all of those have fresh o-rings and then the rest of these are for like our fuel um, lines and that kind of stuff I'll show you as we go. Let me get you guys set back up in the overhead setup and we will start reassembly. For reassembly, um, just real quick, I'll show you if you guys lose track of what carb goes where, uh, it's pretty easy. So if you think about if you're sitting on the bike, cylinder on the far left is one and then two, three, four going, you know, left to right. Farthest left carb is gonna be the one with your choke lever on it. So that's super easy, so that's number one. Then you need to find a carb that has, uh, you know, when you're looking at the choke uh, blade side of the carb, this side, you have a little brass nipple off here for our vacuum line that goes in between. And then also you have the opening for the fuel line. On this side, you do uh, not have the brass line. You have this like 90 degree uh, vent line. So if you find that carb, that's gonna be your number two carb. So there's not another carb that has that exact setup. So this one, it does have the brass and the uh, fuel inlet on the correct side. But if you look on this side, it does not have that little 90 degree uh, vent line. So that's how you can find the number two carb. Then when you go to number three, you're gonna wanna find one with the vent line on the left side and the brass, you know, straight brass line on the right. That's gonna be number three carb. And then of course, process of elimination, the last carb is gonna be number four. So that's how you can keep track of while you're cleaning them and stuff uh, to make sure you get them back in order. Similar thing goes for um, you know the bowls. Basically there's uh, two bowls that are identical and then the other two are identical. And you just wanna make sure, and I still gotta clean a little bit of this stuff off of uh, the bowls, but when you have the pointed part, which is also what I'm gonna consider the front uh, technically pointing towards the back of the bike, but you know the same carburetor uh, orientation we have here the drain on the number one and number two the drains go to the left Number three and number four the drains go to the right So that's how you can kind of uh, remember and I'll go into more on the linkage and stuff and how to make sure you have those in the correct spot uh, When the time comes but as of right now what I'm gonna do is start to replace the needles and then set our needle height uh, based on the setup on the bike. So since this bike does have velocity stacks and a four into one exhaust, uh, I like to go with a nice middle setting on the needle and I'll show you what that means here in just a second. So to get the needle out, there are two uh, Phillips or JIS screws down in the top of this slide. So you don't have to remove this arm. Uh, you can just basically slide the arm to the side, stick your screwdriver down in there, and undo the first one. And we're gonna be taking these screws all the way out. Okay, it should be loose, pour it out. Move the arm a little bit over to the side so we can gain access to the other one. Okay, that one should be all the way out. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the slot that's on the slide to the right, and I can twist this 90 degrees and then pull up. And the reason is there's a little kind of notch or I guess a little nub on the bottom of this that goes into that piece and then turns 90 degrees to kind of lock in. So we need to kind of turn it Pull it out, we'll just put it right down on the table. Now, there's your needle with the little clip. So in our rebuild kit, there's a new needle and a new clip. So we'll go ahead and grab one. This is what they look like. I'll try to get a close up for you. So tiny little clip and needle, and then you can see on there, there are five different notches that you can set that needle out and that helps you to actually tune the carburetor based on uh, you know how much fuel and stuff you need so again on pod filters I'm gonna go right in the dead center so you can just kind of line this little retaining clip and just push it on like that so you just want to make sure it's fully seated 
and ready to go. Now we are ready to slide it back in, just right through from the top, just like that. Take our little arm, slide it down in there, turn it counterclockwise 90 degrees, and we are lined up with our little screw holes. So take the little screw, put her in there. I don't tighten this one all the way down until I get the other one in place as well, just to make sure you're not, you know, a little bit off alignment. Now we can tighten them. And you don't have to go crazy tight on these. You just want to make sure it's seated all the way. You don't have any issues. Okay, and that's gonna be it for this one. And we'll repeat that process on the other three. I'll show you one more time on the next carb over, number two carb, uh, just because technically this one is um, 180 degrees different. So I'm still gonna put the slot towards the right. Go in here and pop out my two screws. But this one, the notch is at the bottom or facing towards me. So we will technically be turning it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Then we can pull it up, pop the needle out, grab our needle and clip. Make sure to get this one set in the middle as well. If one of these is off, it's gonna throw off your tuning quite a bit and will probably be a big headache to figure out why. So get that in the center, pop it in the hole, then now we're going to take this again, slide it down. Now this one is going to be 90 degrees clockwise until our holes line up. Now we're ready to put our screws back in. So number one and number three are going to be, you know, put it back in, turn it counterclockwise. Number two and number four are going to be put it in, turn it clockwise. Uh, you can see the little notch um, so as long as you just make you just make note of when you pull it out which direction you needed to go to get it out and just of course reverse that so put these screws back in two more to go and we'll keep going next thing we're going to do is take eight of the uh, largest uh, o-rings that come in your kit we're going to use those for our two fuel T's so I'll just take a little pick pull these off a lot of times these are so dry that they just break off. Inevitably stab yourself with a pick. It's kind of part of the process. So you get the idea. We're going to pull these O-rings off. Swap over the new ones so we don't have any fuel leaks. Next we're going to put in our emulsion tubes, um, which is the last thing we took out. So just take the carb, flip it up on its top. You remember, this is the emulsion tube, a little brass piece, brand new one comes in your kit. Um, so there's like a little notch. See if I can show you. There's like a little notch, a little area, a little bump, and then the long area with the holes in it, and then a little kind of stubby part at the end. We want to stick this part in first. So the little kind of, you know, I don't know what that is, quarter inch, maybe less, and then has the little shoulder. That's going to go into the carb that direction. And you shouldn't have to force these in. You can just drop it in this top hole here. Use the same little punch we used to get them out and just a light press just like that. Just enough they won't fall out. You can see it's just barely, it's basically sitting flush uh, with the inside bore of the carburetor there. So show you on the next one. Make sure the little notch piece is going in first. Little press. 
that's it. Now we are ready to reinstall the uh, slides and little arms uh, that hook to the linkage. So um, we'll grab number one carburetor, kind of turn it up a little bit so we can access the top. Grab our slide and then the correct arm. So if you lose track of which arms are which, this is part of the reason why I leave these screws in here. Um, because if you put the screw on the top, you want to make sure that you know the direction it's sliding in they can only slide in from one direction the it's open here and it's capped on that side so we know this is going to slide in this way because the screws on the top and we want this little ball to be facing towards the carburetor body so we know that this is the correct one for this carb we could also use the one from the number three carb because it's identical but if you look at the one from the number two carb if we put the screw on the top in the direction it slides in, the arm is facing the wrong direction. So obviously this isn't the correct one for this carburetor body. This is the correct one. So we'll pull our little screw off. If you remember from disassembly, this little nylon or plastic ring goes inside the carburetor body. And everything else on this stays out here. So a little felt ring, a little retainer clip, a small spring, that's all going to slide in. First things first, we'll put the slide in place. So if you remember, there is a little cut down the side of these slides. What that does is it actually corresponds with a tiny little nub that's inside the carburetor body. So if you look down in here, obviously you guys can't see it from how far away you are, but just trust the fact that there is a tiny little metal nub that needs to line up with that. So you're going to put this in, you need to make sure you get that lined up so that your slide can go up and down nice and easy like this. If you find that it's not going down all the way, uh, it's possible you grab the wrong slide um, because on the opposite carburetors, uh, the little nubbin goes the other way. Um, so you'll have to make sure that again, you, you know, kind of keep these organized. That's part of the reason why this tray uh, just off camera here is nice because you can put all of, you know, the parts for number one, the parts for number two in their individual bins and it makes this process a lot easier. So. We're gonna take our little uh, nylon ring, our arm, we're gonna to start to slide the arm in. And then we wanna make sure that we can get this little O-ring, or little spacer, whatever we wanna call it, over the little bar. Slide the arm around until we can get this all the way through. So just like that. Now, on the top here is where our little screw goes. So you can kind of play around with it, you know, stick your finger in here. You'll have to compress that spring a little bit to make sure that your hole is lined up. You can take our little seven mil screw, put it in there. We want to match the, there's a little round part and then a flat part of that retaining ring. The flat part goes out so that we can bend one of those tabs up here in just a little bit. Take our seven mil socket, run it down. Again, you don't need to be super, super tight on these. It's just nice and snug. Check and make sure our operation, nothing's binding. Everything's kind of moving like it should. Flathead screwdriver, get in here and just bend up one of these corners, just like that, to make sure that that screw can't work itself loose. So you can actually bend up both corners if you want. Uh, one's probably enough, completely up to you. So that is bent, so this carburetor has the slide on, ready to go. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you um, the next step two is going to be to put our cap on. Make sure to get your new gasket. Cap. I hit uh, these screws on the wire wheel just to kind of clean them up a little bit. You can also replace these, of course, if you want with some, you know, socket head Allens or just some replacement, you know, stainless or something if you want to spice it up a little bit. Don't need to over tighten these. Just a nice snug fit and the top of this carburetor is done. So I'll put this one down, repeat that process three more times. Uh, this will probably make the video a little bit longer. I'm just going to show you again. Um, so you can skip forward a little bit if you don't want to see this process again. You think you got it, but 
I want to make sure that uh, if you're attempting this for the first time, you have all the information you need. So take my slide, take my arm, go ahead, put our slide in place, making sure our notch lines up with the little nub inside the body right there. Moves up and down. Pull the seven mil screw off. Bolt, I don't know. What's the difference between a screw and a bolt? I feel like I should know that, but I can't think of it. We will slide this in. Oh, yeah, on the correct side. I'm looking in the camera. See, we want to make sure this nub faces the carburetor body. Our little plastic o-ring. Takes a little finagling to make sure it's on the arm properly. There we go. Make sure the arm linkage is in place. Give it some little twists and we're in. Now we can make sure we line up our screw hole. Screw in and run it down. Next step is we're going to uh, install this uh, linkage components. You can see the paper towel is a little bit wet. As I go, I kind of shoot WD-40 over a lot of this stuff. Uh, the vapor blasting process when I blow dry can kind of leave stuff just a little bit on the dry side. Uh, so I kind of just lubricate as I go. Um, so that's why you see a little puddles. Um, so if you remember, there's going to be um, two brackets. Uh, for basically each set of carbs. So number one and number two, one, two, three, four, three, four. And if you forget where these little um, brackets go and which carbs they go to, much like the rest of the components, number one and number three are the same design, number two and number four are the same design. So if you lay them out on the table, you know, it's easy to see the kind of shape they're in, if that helps you. If you want to visualize it of how they're actually used, you want the little shelf to be facing towards you, and then this is gonna clip around and onto the linkage just like this. So if that helps, this is number one, this is the bracket uh, associated with it. So before we put it on the car, we need to reinstall our little spring with the little golf tee domed thingamajig basically that just slides inside the spring and we're going to drop it in this threaded hole here the, the bottom one drop it in there take it wrap it around the back side where that little ball is slide the ball in and that's exactly how it's going to go we're going to leave it just kind of hanging out like that for right now do the same thing for number two grab a golf tee and a spring Slide it in, drop it spring first into our hole, wrap it around the back side of the carb, slide the ball into the bracket. So you'll need to kind of compress that spring a little bit while you do it. The whole point of that spring is to keep tension uh, on there. So now we'll kind of put them down. And before I move on to the other ones, I'll show you what's going to go into that hole was this little adjustment mechanism. That's got, you know, bigger threads, the locking nut, this little connection uh, bar in the middle. And this little bar has like a notch out of one side and it's straight across on the other side. This is the direction we want to install it. We want the little notch to go towards the back of the carburetors. So we'll start with just one of these sides. We will drop it in that same hole we just put the spring in. Give it a couple of turns just so it doesn't fall out. Slide the number two carb over here. And you can see where that goes in just like that. Before we install it though, if you remember we have a vacuum line in the middle. We also have our fuel T so we'll take one of the T's. I'm gonna spray a little bit of WD on the O-rings just to make it nice and easy. You can go ahead and slide that in the hole there all the way in and then make sure our fuel line is kind of pointing towards the back there. 
I'm gonna go grab some of my uh, OE fuel and vacuum line and we're gonna cut a piece of this uh, about one inch long. Um, let me grab a ruler and I'll tell you exactly how long we're gonna cut it. Turns out my guesstimation was right. It's gonna be one inch long. So we have two of them. Go ahead and slide that onto number one carb. Have it kind of sticking out like that. Now we're ready to take number two. And we're gonna be sliding it into place. So there's kind of three components we need to make sure line up. One of them is gonna be our choke linkage. So that little notch goes right underneath the screw there. So it helps if we turn the choke to the on position. Like that. And then we need to get our vacuum line and our fuel line uh, kind of lined up as well. So we'll start with the vacuum line. I'm gonna get that going, the fuel line. Once they're all kind of lined up, you can press them in place. Yeah, just like that. And we can take some needle nose and slide that over just a little bit, but it's gonna be super close. Now we can take our linkage, make sure I'm in the frame here, line up the two arms, and then drop in the other threaded adjustment and give it a couple of turns so it doesn't fall out. Just like that. Okay. Number one and number two are joined for the most part. We'll come over here. We'll wait on these other screws or these little caps and springs and golf tees uh, because we're going to. Those are going to be for the linkage that are um, you know the actual main linkage component. We'll just show you again on three and four here. We'll start. We'll put a little vacuum line on there take our little fuel tee slide that in take our linkage golf tee spring drop it in the hole wrap it around the back put it on same thing over here Golf tee, spring, drop it in the hole, around the back, slide that on, make sure we don't knock over any components. We'll go ahead and slide these two together, making sure we line up the choke, the vacuum line, and the fuel line. A little finagling, just like that. They are together. Now we're ready for our adjustment piece, making sure that the notch is going towards the back of the carbs. Drop in, drop in. Okay. Now, three and four are joined. Ready to move on. For this next step, it's going to vary a little bit just based on how your fuel lines were set up. Uh, since this set had a short line up to a T like this, a little bit longer line kind of wrapped around uh, into here, I just cut a line about six inches long. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that onto that little fuel tee. It's easier to do it now, have more access to it than you will when it's all back together. Just make sure it's all the way seated. We don't want any leaks. If you get the proper size line, um, you don't really need a, a fuel, like a hose clamp on there, in my opinion. I'm sure people will disagree, but uh, okay. So we'll take that, we'll wait on this other fuel line for just a moment, grab our main bracket here, gonna make sure you guys can see what I'm doing, 
we are going to slide the fuel line through this hole and then slide both the backs of the carbs through just like that now hopefully you guys will be able to see those two pieces we just put on the little holes on the top correspond with these little round nubs on the linkage itself so there is enough slack to be able to put in one at a time I don't think it really matters which one we do so we'll Slide one on like that. I'm trying to do it where you guys can see. Pull this one around. Slide the other one in. So now it's in. These are both on and in place. Now what I'm going to do is grab the other spring and golf tee. Now this time the tee goes in first and the spring sticks out. Our little cap goes down. Threads on. Same thing for this one, golf tee spring, golf tee in first, cap goes down on top. And we'll thread those down in a minute, but you guys kind of get the idea. Now this whole setup is kind of linked together, stuck to the throttle linkage, but of course we haven't bolted the carbs to the actual bracket just yet. We'll do that in a minute. Now we're ready to put number two, or sorry, number three, number four on. This is a little bit more complicated just because we have the uh, little pin that holds the return spring in place uh, that we also have to get in there. So we're trying to line that up. We're also trying to make sure our choke linkage is lined up uh, and then get the carbs into place. So how I'm gonna try and do it, how I typically get away with it is Take our little mechanism, you put it in this little cup on the side. I don't know why I called that a mechanism. It's a pin retainer thing. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. A little bit longer fuel line on this side just because it has to wrap around. You can use your stock fuel line as a gauge of how long you need to cut it. Thread that through the linkage. Start to put the backs of the carbs in. Work it down. Okay, our little pin is lined up, our choke linkage is lined up, we're in. So, now that we're in, we can try and get the linkage in place. Here's one side. Now that we have all of them in place, it takes a little bit more finagling. in place. If you look on this side, we had one pop out. So I'll have to pull that cap back off. Not a big deal. Now we can put springs and everything in the caps on this side. Remember the little golf tee goes in first on these. Alrighty, we'll tighten those down a little bit, but for now, when so nothing pops out, I want to flip these over, just like that, and we're going to put in our eight retaining screws into each one of these holes to suck the carburetors and actually mount them solidly to this bracket. So I wouldn't tighten these all the way down yet, it's basically Kind of get each one started just because you want to make sure all these holes line up you don't want to suck anything in place and you know end up bending something or we're just going to like i said run them in a couple of threads Keep working our way all the way down
Okay, now that we got them all in place, we can tighten them all the way down. Excuse my sniffling. I think it's ragweed is what we have here in Texas. That's going crazy right now and it's causing me all kinds of sinus trouble, so I do apologize. over make sure okay our linkage should come out a little bit that is something we'll have to fix not a big deal I can take my little needle nose pop them in place just like that no need to freak out all right everything seems to be operating like it should Vacuum lines, our spring retainers in place, fuel lines, all our throttle linkage and everything is okay. Good. Now we will uh, throw that throttle return spring on. It's just going to go from that thing we installed up to this little uh, notch on the linkage right here. To get this throttle spring in place, you can basically slide it through, put the little hook down around, you can kind of reach from underneath as well. Get that hooked. Like that. And then I like to take the little needle nose, grab the other side. Get just like that. So throttle linkage is pretty much complete. Now we can go through, just give these a final snug make sure we're all nice and tight perfect we are well on our way we can give the throttle a little test cool so we will move on to uh, I think now's a good time to show the bench sink uh, operation and that's where we're going to take a, an eighth inch drill bit and we're going to be feeding it straight down the throat of this uh, each individual carb and adjusting our little adjusters up here that we just installed to make sure that all of the carburetors are synced and in line so let me grab the drill bit and I'll walk you through that process so I'm going to do my best to show you up close here so hopefully you guys can see down in there you see the slide that we installed a little while ago it's got that little bit of a gap right at the end of my finger down there so when we adjust these screws basically we make sure we have some slack in the lock nut and then there is a little notch for a flathead screwdriver on the side here when I turn that flathead screwdriver if you look inside we are actually moving that slide up and down as I screw it in and out. So hopefully you guys can see that. Screwing it out lifts the slide up. Screwing it in closes it. So what you do is you take your eighth inch drill bit. It's like this. We're going to use the you know non-cutting side. Slide it into the end of the carburetor right through here right against the needle so kind of try to make sure you're right in the dead center take your flathead screwdriver put it on the little screw and then turn it in until you can just feel the drill bit is snug you can still get it in and out but it's right there at an eighth of an inch and that's it that's your adjustment you keep the screwdriver in Grab a little wrench, tighten down your lock nut. Move on to the next one. So we'll grab this one. This one's way high, I can tell. So we'll screw it in a bunch, drop our drill bit in, keep screwing until we can just feel it contacting the drill bit right there. Make sure you can pull the drill bit in and out still. 
Boom. And that's going to be our adjustment for that one. And this is it. This is what's considered a bench sink. So this is going to get us very close. A lot of my bikes, this is enough. I don't even have to do a vacuum sink uh, afterwards. Repeat this process on number three. Don't have quite enough slack in our lock nut. Bring that up a little bit. Come back in here. Run her down. There. And then our last one. So now I can just tighten down those lock nuts, you know, making sure to keep the screwdriver in there so that we don't lose our adjustment. And then they are bench synced. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and drop in our mixture screws. So new ones come in the kit. Little screw just like that, flathead. It does come with a new little spring. And they slide into these little outside holes here. And we'll screw them in. I remember correctly, I think these were one and a half turns out. We'll start with that. There's one. Next one's going to be in the same spot in the next car bin. Screw it until it's seated. Half, one. One and a half. Repeat it on these two. 40 jets are cleaned up and ready to go. If you don't remember which hole they go in, one of them's threaded, one of them isn't. So it goes in the threaded hole. Just down to just seats. We'll go all the way down the line. I get a bunch of questions about jetting. What I typically run, and again, it, jetting, there's not just one solution that's like, oh, hey, if you have pod filters and a 4 into one here you go. It's, it's based on, you know, the altitude you're at, the time of year, based on if the, you know, it's cold or warm because the density is different. And so a general rule of thumb is, you know, bump up maybe two sizes on each uh, jet. So... For pods, I typically like to run 110 for the main, 40 for the secondary. This particular bike's gonna be running 105 in 40s. So if right in that 105, 110, maybe even up to 115 range, uh, and then a 38 or 40 uh, should get you pretty darn close. Uh, but again, it, it is kind of gonna vary based on uh, where you live. So now we'll go ahead and uh, we'll throw in our seats and needles. I'm going to throw a little bit of WD on these as well just because these o-rings are pretty tight. Drop them in with the bigger side out. Like that. Three and four. You can use the uh, little socket we had earlier, let's see, 7 mil. Yeah, that'll help us push them in a little bit, get them seated. And these are held in with a little retainer as well. So just to make sure we get those kind of O-rings starting to go down, and then we can Throw the little retainers on with the little screws. Just go over the seat and screw in just like this. And if it helps you, you can uh, take a picture of this, you know, when, before you take it apart. Uh, you can pause this video, you know, you can do a couple of different things to uh, to make sure you don't get 
lost if you forget where some of your little components go. Some people like to go and put all, of, you know, one carb together and then move on to the next one. I personally like to just go step by step and repeat that step on the each individual carburetor to each their own on how you want to do it. Last one. All right, now we'll drop our needles in. A little springy side goes up, pointy side goes in. Now we'll move on to, we'll do our main jets. So remember I replaced the O-ring on these. The kit did come with stock replacements. These are 98s. O-ring goes in because this little notch is for that retaining clip I mentioned earlier in the video. I'll drop these in. So now we'll move on to our floats. So part of the cleanup process I was doing on all of the bolts um, is I also cleaned up the pen that holds the float in. How I like to do this is I take my drill, I actually chuck up the needle or the uh, pin in the drill just like that and then spin it and you can take a little piece of sandpaper, a wire wheel, whatever you want and just kind of rub it and make sure you clean off all of the gunk. You make sure there's no, um, you know, kind of sharp edges or anything that would cause this to, you know, not be able to have nice free movement. So all of these are cleaned up. We're ready to put our float on. So the way the floats go on, the kind of bigger section of the float, basically the, it mounts about three quarters of the way up the float goes into the carburetor. So just like that, the tang kind of wraps around and goes underneath. Just like this, slide our pin from the side here, all the way through. Just like that, it's gonna rest on that little needle we just put in. We'll go ahead and set this float height as well. So you can either install them all and set all the heights or I'll just show you real quick so we can at least cut some of the length of this video out. But to set the float height, what you're gonna to wanna to do, set the carburetor on its side so where the float is just resting against the needle, but it's actually not even compressing it at all. It's just resting on it just like that. You can take a, uh, you know, a small rule with uh, millimeters on it, or what I like to do is take my caliper and set it to, for a, a 500 and a 550, it's 22 millimeters. For a 350 um, and probably the 400 or 450, um, four cylinders, it's gonna be 21 millimeters. So I set my caliper to 22 millimeters. That means this little bar right here is exactly 22 millimeters long. Set it on the body of the carb and you can see these floats are probably four or five millimeters higher than they need to be. So what we're gonna do now is lower them. How I'm gonna lower them is I need to bend that little uh, tang. I'll show you on this float right here. Hopefully you can see. There's the little tang, it's that little tab sticking out right there. We need to bend that and to lower the float height we need to bend that up because basically what that's doing is it's moving the contact point a little bit further this direction, which will lower the overall float height. So to do that, just gonna take a flathead screwdriver, same one we've been using. I'm gonna gingerly come in from the side and just pry up a little bit. Doesn't take much, these are made out of brass. 
and just make sure you do it evenly and we'll check it again nailed it so that's perfect sometimes they can bend a little bit you can actually just kind of tweak them make sure they're even right at 22 millimeters across perfect it's like I've done this before or something uh, and then we'll move on to the next one making sure we don't lose any pieces Put the float in I'll show you one more time that's in that's nice I can tell it's already going to be high but we'll make sure we don't have too much pressure on it yep a couple millimeters high get in here just gingerly bending that up you can tell these are tweaked a little bit try to get them even and then you can adjust them a little bit more to come up still right there perfect one last little tweak nice I like it make sure our pins nice and in place everything's moving freely nothing's binding up knock out the other two all the floats are on and adjusted so we're ready for these very important jet retaining clips so there's basically a bigger hole that is slotted into a smaller hole and then a little fork and then on each carb you'll see there's like a little uh, kind of protrusion that sticks out so basically you stick it over in the big hole slide it over into that little notch on the jet turn it like 45 degrees to where that lines up with a little tang on there like that on twist there on twist like that and the final one on twist this is what's going to make sure our jets don't fall out while we're riding now we can take the bowl nice and clean almost drop it but don't our new gaskets, quality kits come with uh, O-rings like this that are actually already uh, kind of to the exact form of the bowl. Some will come with just a round O-ring. You can still get good results with those, but uh, these are kind of perfect fit, or they should be. So now we're going to take this and with making sure it doesn't fall out of its little groove, we're going to turn it, slide it right in place, holding it down flat. There should be a little bit of that springiness, uh, and that's what's, you know, the bot. This is touching the bottom of the bowl. That's what's keeping our jet in. For this particular rebuild, I'm going to go ahead and hook this customer up with some of these stainless Allen screws because I didn't like the condition of his factory ones. I'm going to start one over here, grab another one, and go to the diagonal corner, run that in. Making sure that we do not over tighten it, it is very easy to strip these. Alright, gasket and everything looks like it's in place, go ahead and run in our other two screws last steps just going to be the little drain screws that go in here there are little o-rings uh, the kit of course comes with new ones so just going to use the little pick pull these off and then there's the little fat o-rings that come in the kit of course there's just one in each kit so it should be pretty easy to find Throw that on, screw these in, 
and we are ready to go back on the bike. I like to spray just a little bit of lube in there. Went ahead and put these factory vent lines or the ones that were on the bike at least back on there. Come around from the side. Enough to catch any wiring, go around your clutch cable, and then just walk them back in place just like that. Make sure all four are seated all the way in. Looks like we're good to go. Tighten up our hose clamps, um, throw our throttle linkage back on, again this little nub just slides in and then the cable comes around, clamp right there, tighten up this side to, uh, to do that. So I'm going to knock that out and then what do you say we throw my auxiliary fuel tank on here? Can't use the fuel tank on this bike because we are uh, still in need of rebuilding the petcock. Uh, but I want to fill these up, make sure we don't have any leaks, make sure everything's working properly, and then fire it up. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and turn my fuel on, and we're just going to keep an eye on all these drains. Make sure nothing starts leaking. Occasionally you can have a float just get a little bit stuck. Um, if you can't get it to, you know, if it starts leaking out, tap the side of the carburetor with a, a light hammer or something, nothing crazy, just to make sure that that float is nice and free. Sometimes they can, if they're stuck in the down position because there's no fuel in there at all, uh, you know, you kind of just need to bump them a little bit to get them to start to float on that fuel instead of just being stuck down and then the fuel comes past it, if that makes sense. Um, so don't freak out if it starts to, uh, to leak out. Normally you can just tap it, again, free that float and then it should be good to go. Worst case scenario, you can always pull that ball off, adjust that float height, um, you know to make it seal a little bit more but that 22 ish millimeters um, should be really close we seem to be good on this one uh, yeah what do you say we try to fire this thing up I'm gonna give it a choke no idea what this idle screw is set out right now we'll just keep it where it's at turn our key Ooh, our battery's dead jump box in place. Let's try this again. Choke. Key on. to do it on this video guys I hope you uh, learned and were able to follow step by step on rebuilding these carbs and had uh, the same results we did so I would be a bad business owner if I didn't mention the fact that um, if you didn't pick up on it I do offer this as a service um, so if you went through this whole video and you're still not entirely confident in knocking them out yourselves I do offer a mail-in service ship your carbs to me I'll clean them ultrasonic disassemble um, you know everything you saw today uh, and knock it out for you. For these uh, model carburetors, the base rebuild runs 350 bucks. Uh, vapor blasting is a $75 option if it is with a rebuild. Uh, so 425 bucks to have them 
vapor blasted, completely gone through, including uh, new kits and everything. So again, if you weren't confident, hopefully I explained it well enough that you are confident to do it, but in the case that you're not, um, you know, send them to me. So I would love to, to help you guys out. Drop a comment below. You can reach out to me at classicoctane at gmail.com or um, Instagram at classicoctane. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions or anything. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.